matter, that of the president. Even those politicians who now think they will power in the government party will not, will not know where they, uh, they, they lost the plot. The people trying to kill or take over Jubilee and hand it over to Kenya Kwanzaa may not be fully aware of the complex schemes being plotted by their sponsors. There are mere pawns in a game that will eventually consume them. Kenyans will recall that one afternoon in 1982, a few excited members of parliament set and approved the making of Kenya a one-party state. Those excited men and women who voted aye that afternoon in 1982 thought they were punishing other people. A number of them became the very first victims of the snares they thought they were laying for others. Which is why Jubilee's war toward of Kenya Kwanzaa must be the war of every Kenyan who treasure freedom, the rule of law, and respect for human rights, including the right to associate and to hold and express views freely. I must commend Jubilee Party for remaining strong, focused in the face of sustained state-sponsored onslaught. I am happy that the party recognizes its responsibility to Kenyans to defend and sustain our hard-won multi-party system. More importantly, I commend the Jubilee Party for continuing to fight for lowering of cost of living, public office, and abolition of excessive taxation of Kenyans. I want to assure you that we will fight this battle together and we will win it together. Failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. As we push for respect for political parties, I want to make a heartfelt call on our country to respect leaders who have served our nation and handed over the baton to others. In the recent months, you have seen very uncouth, very primitive, and unwarranted attacks on the person and property of His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta and his family including the founding president, Mr. Jomo Kenyatta. Shame on them. <laughs> Nothing could be more uncouth than what we have witnessed in this regard, especially when it comes from men and women who call themselves leaders, who expect to be respected when they retire, unless they plan to die in office.